Do you like wedding photography? Do you like Iceland? Well, you've come to the right video. Today, we're joined by Cole Roberts, who is my event co-host, as well as there is something special planned for this trip that no one really knows about yet. Wait, you might now. Surprise. Also, if you're interested in knowing when new workshops and conferences are available that, that we'll be putting on or I'll be at, there is a link down below for that. Sign up, get on that list, and you'll be the first to know. Today, we're going to Iceland, and my friend Alex is actually going to propose to his girlfriend, Kinsey, and her ring is in this adapter box for a Nikon F to Sony mount that I have a Nikon tilt shift that I like to use with my Sony cameras, and her ring fits perfectly in here. There it is, it's upside down. This is the box, this is not actually the ring itself. The ring itself. So there it is, let's go to Iceland. Oh, it's like snow, right? The day that Alex is gonna give Kinsey this all new Nikon F mount to Sony E adapter. I think he's a little bit nervous and she doesn't know yet. So I hope that Kinsey enjoys her adapter. Grocery bag, snacks on snacks. Ready. Ready to rock and roll. She's down. Cole's a horse farmer. We are doing a wedding photography workshop, which means Alex and Kinsey are modeling today. So they're also photographers, and Alex has been my friend since we were like 15 and actually worked at an Outback Steakhouse together. Not just an Outback Steakhouse joke, but an actual truth. And basically the way this workshop goes is Cole will direct us to a spot. He has a bunch of spots in his brain, and we just kind of pull over to the side of the road or pull into a stop and hop out, take some pictures, and move on. There it is. What? How do you make videos? There it is. The sun. Bye, Cole. It's sunny. So Iceland, the weather is uh, just volatile kind of all the time. That Even if it looks like it might rain all day, it's not going to rain all day. And if it looks like it's going to be sunny all day, it's for sure not going to be sunny all day. And we were kind of guided, so basically Cole was driving to some spots and I was checking the weather and seeing some road cams and seeing where it looked the best. And we saw this little break of sun out this way and we just kind of headed out here for a quick stop. I think that in Iceland that obviously you want to get the Skogafoss and all the, the waterfall, kind of those key shots. But a lot of my personal favorite shots come from random locations around Iceland that you would have never expected. Like, what what is this? Why are, why are we stopping at this weird lava mountain thing. I don't know, but it looks nice. I like it. A lot of these images are from my 45 millimeter Nikon tilt shift on a Sony a7R. Nope. a 7 a 74 Product names are so confusing. a 74 We're doing a hybrid workshop and 
my hybrid camera of choice is still the Sony a7 IV, but I only shoot on HD 1080, 60 frames a second since 4K comes with a crazy crop. Hopefully that comes and gets sorted in a future camera. Fast buffer, 4K 60, that's all I need. 24 megapixels, I, I don't need more than that. There will be a dedicated video on the 45 tilt coming out to this channel, so if you have not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Go check out some other videos. There's, I, I'm gonna say this is the 50th Iceland video on the channel. Uh, I've been there, what, 32 times now? And I probably on average make three to four videos every single trip. So uh, a lot of Iceland content, no travel guide, just photography. This is the sneaky waterfall that is uh, kind of beside Skogafoss. And I had never been to it. Cole was like, how, how have you never been here? And I was like, I don't know. I've just never gone down this little pathway here. Marshall's been to it. He told me to go and I was like, nah, pass. I don't need to see another waterfall. Turns out it's like the nicest waterfall. There's barely anyone around. There's a few people in the background there that can easily be photoshopped out. And I shot that at a super slow shutter speed so I can get that water, water flowing, dropping speed. Yeah. So the benefit of workshops of this style is one, you obviously get to take great portfolio. Two, you get to expense uh, a nice trip to your business. Uh, also the work that you create on this trip will book you work if you're smart and you make video. Oh man, forgot about that. But the main benefit I think is that you get to make lifelong connections with other photographers that are also interested in just kind of doing cool stuff and doing shoots like this. So uh, you get to you get to hang out in the future. People come from all over. Actually, pretty much everyone is from the U.S. and Canada on this trip, which is pretty rare. So shout out to everybody for making the making the effort to get out here because it was a fun time. We got a morning. The first morning was okay-ish weather, and then we just had good enough weather for the remainder of the trip, which is amazing. And now <laughs> it is a moment. What are what are we up to today, Alex? Well, drinking wine. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we can't even get married. <laughs> Being congratulated by a lot of people. Yeah, this is the, the busy spot too. <laughs> yeah. Taylor, you you rolling video? Okay, I'm gonna do the wine thing to start. <laughs> Pretend like you don't know the wine's coming. <laughs> hey, you can go in the middle if you want. So Kinsey lost a bet to me one time. So she has to drink the first sip of wine of every glass I ever have for the rest of life. <laughs> How's it taste? No bueno? Okay. So. Wanna have a real wedding? <laughs> yes. Yeah? Wanna get married? Yes. I <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Is he gonna shake it with the wine? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> she said yes. <laughs> okay, we could we could go back to photos now. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing things backwards. I know. <laughs> Fake wedding first, engagement after. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can go back to photos now.
Now, if you're a little Iceland curious and you're considering planning a trip to come out here, one thing that I would recommend, the immediate thing that comes to your mind is like, oh, we should stay in Reykjavik. Don't, don't do that. You can if you want. If you do, absolutely leave like we did here. Um, it's a beautiful city, it's, it's a wonderful place, but you're not really experiencing Iceland, especially if you're doing bus trips and you're kind of with a big group of people. My recommendation, land at the airport, rent a car, drive around, find an Airbnb in the absolute middle of nowhere, stop at a bonus grocery store, get a bunch of food because dinners out here are very, very, very expensive. And my recommendation for a route, if you have like maybe four or five days, is to do kind of the south route that we did today. I would recommend going to a city called Vik. It's just V-I-K. It's about maybe two, three hours from the airport that you'll land at, which is kind of near Reykjavik. And you just drive out south. The drive is amazing. Even though it's a three hour drive, give yourself like six or seven hours because you're going to want to stop. And find an Airbnb out in the Vik area and spend a night or two there. You can leapfrog to Glacier Lagoon if you want to go see some, some little icebergs in the water. Depending on the time of year, there's a webcam, so maybe give it a quick uh, scout before you head out that way. But even if you don't go all the way to Glacier Lagoon, there is an actual physical glacier that you can walk up to uh, that's along the way there. So South Route is really cool. Just drive to Vic, stay a couple nights in Vic, then maybe go back and spend a night or two in Reykjavik. Or if you want to ball out, the Silica Hotel at Blue Lagoon is one of my favorite hotels in the world. You get your own Blue Lagoon, essentially, and it's just for hotel guests. So the Retreat Hotel is the super expensive one. It's like 2500 US a night. The Retreat Hotel, I think, is closer to six or 700 which is still quite expensive. But for a once-in-a-lifetime experience, um, I would say that it is worth it. Just don't pack your day and show up at 9 p.m. at night. Like, show up and get full use of your time at the hotel. And the hotel stay also comes with two tickets to Blue Lagoon, the, the main one. So you get to go over there and be like, wow, this isn't as good as our hotel is. So let's go back to the hotel. Um, also, Lava, the restaurant there is actually pretty decent for a tourist trap if you want to spend like $250 on a, on a meal. And now, Cole is bringing us to the Cliffs of Death, which is uh, not the official, we can't pronounce whatever this place is actually called, but uh, Cole is named it the Cliff of Death. And this road is super gnarly. We're on like a 45 degree slant. It's crazy. But... For whatever reason, on the GoPro, it just looks like you're just on a regular, boring road. And the reveal. Bam, bam. Cliffs of death. There it is to your right. Oh, oh wow. Uh, I'm flying the drone. What? <laughs> And if you want to know when we're doing more events like this, whether it's going to be in Iceland with Rodi or something else, um, I'll put a link in the description to sign up for my mailing list because that is usually the first place that I announce anything. Sometimes it is the only place that I announce something if it is sold out basically within a few minutes after that, which has happened one time. It doesn't happen all of the time, but if you're on that list, you get first access to any of the events that we're doing. This was the only letdown the entire entire trip. Weather great, all locations great. Usually this looks like Blue Lagoon. This is a secret little Blue Lagoon that Cole found. And it is usually perfectly blue. And today it's just kind of weird gray brown. So womp womp. Also, all these drone shots are Alex's. Alex flew his drone a lot, and I stole all his footage and I've been using it and not told you about it until now. That's his shot. He risked the bird, the bird strike. They were not happy that he was there. Usually if there's birds around, they get angry. We, we bring the drone down. We don't want to upset the wildlife, but um, you don't usually find that out until you're kind of out there. Scooter gang. Scooter gang. I'm just trying to keep it organic like the planet. Right this son of a gun. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, oh, dude, the brakes are solid. Some power slides. Oh my god, Taylor. The studded tire is really uh, taking next level, you know? All right. What is your review of uh, the evening so far? Who closes at 11? I, I literally told the guys, like, you should turn this into a 24-7 restaurant, nightclub, put some, like, arcades in the middle there, you know, like, student sort of vibe, and the guy's like, bro, why don't we do that? Taylor said, we'll see you in a year. So, we'll see you in a year. Or less. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to everyone that came out to this event because it was amazing. We had a heck of a lot of fun and we didn't see any puffins. Maybe next time. We gotta go in the summer for puffins. Mr. Tyler Cheeseman, my editor, has left me a message here that says maybe a nice title screen and to that I say, how about hot dogs instead? Thanks for watching. If you want to know about future trips as they're coming up, link in the description to get on the mailing list and you'll be first to know. Goodbye. Oh, you didn't think that we'd be in it. You thought that was just another drone shot.